2012 meeting of the Des Moines Park and Recreation Board will come to order, please. Rebecca, will you call the roll, please? Galloway? Here. Jensen? Here. Ogle? Here. Kenny Vanderhaar? Here. Nolan? Here. Cahill? Here. George? Here. Thornton? Here. Feltner? Here. Chen? Here. We have a quorum, and legal counsel has advised that we should place in the record the reason for two members participating electronically while well, Suzette Jensen is in Florida, obviously can't be here in person, and uh, Cindy Chen uh, could not make it because of the uh, blizzard situation. So that's the reason they're participating electronically. Uh, before we get started, uh, there's a card making the rounds uh, for a couple of uh, board members. Uh, we're real sorry to hear that Lloyd's mom passed away, so uh, we'll keep uh, his family in our thoughts and prayers. And also, Marion Gilb is under the weather, so we have a card going around for her. And we hope she's back on her feet soon. Okay, now uh, let's uh, talk about uh, the uh, minutes of the previous month. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments, questions, additions, or corrections to the minutes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes of the previous month are approved. Next we have a presentation. Oh, let's also talk about the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Any corrections or changes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda is approved. Next, we'll move on to a presentation by the Friends of Des Moines Parks. And Jane Hine and, and Cindy Tanner and Mike Everly will come up and tell us. Uh, do you want us to speak here or around here? Wherever oh, you want to be, you Jane. Want to come, you can show up yes. and join us. Do you have to stand next to Mike? No. Okay. Uh, stand next to Mike. 84. Joe, would you like to picture? We all kind of stay here to kind of. Hold things together. Good trip. We're such a member. Okay. Memories of the cushions. Do we all need to give our names or just friends of the Des Moines Parks? Well, go ahead and give your names. Okay. Jane Hine. I serve as president. Mike Eberly. Cindy Fanter. Uh, Dick Thorne, Mike Eberly's former basketball coach. <laughs> <laughs> My knees hurt. <laughs> Anyway, we're happy to be here. Um, we have a check that we want to present to you. Um, the friends are alive and well. Um, we did present this to the city council um, at their last meeting, or a meeting before last. And we just wanted to let you know what we're up to. Um, you know, we do, we've been going since uh, 2008, and we're doing above and beyond things that um, the uh, park District cannot afford to do. Our major thing was the swimming lessons. We give a uh, swim scholarship to students that can, the lower income that cannot afford to pay for that themselves. Uh, we have 15 projects that we worked on last year. This year we are going to be having uh, a boat uh, lift uh, for the physically impaired down at Grays Lake uh, that we raised the funds for, and um, that will take place in May. Dr. Eberly and Joe kind of headed that up, but we've been very busy doing things. Um, what else would we like to say? Any want to add anything? Oh, right. Well, we're do implementing a strategic plan. Uh, we're working with the community foundation so that uh, the funds will be. Uh, we possibly will put some of our monies in there. And actually, that's a good thing because they see who is listed there and then they give uh, people a see that. But this past year, now let me make this very clear. This past year in 2012, we have given to 15 projects, et cetera, in the amount of $174,695. And 35 cents. The first year we were in operation, we gave $2,500 for swim scholarships. So we are growing. We're hoping we're going to keep that going and uh, keep it multiplying. Other uh, cities have friends groups for their park and recreation department. And so um, it's very interesting to see where they are and where they've been. 
So we are alive and well, and we're growing, and we just wanted you to know, because we are a part of you, that this is what is going on and what has transpired. Any questions? Okay. One more time, I'm just going to say that this was money that has been given last year. We're not presenting a check of this amount to the city. It's various projects that we have done. It's a total. So, I'm sorry, you were going to ask a question. No, no I was just saying, I think that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you from the park board. What, a, what an effort, and it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful time. And just the beginning. Thank you very much. I'd like to grab a quick picture. Those of the board members want to go out there with them because the TV audience is that way as well. We can have a check and have you go out there with the friends and take a quick picture. Jen's got her camera ready. So those that want to participate, we'd like to have all of you out there for a quick picture. Okay. Promote this uh, via our <laughs> Facebook site and other things to make sure we get good publicity out of this. So go on out. Okay, well, thank you, Jane and Cindy and Mike and Dick and uh, everyone else who participated. That's really encouraging. The friends are starting to snowball after the lean times of getting started. Now it's really starting to look prosperous. So it's on the right track and really glad to see that. Thanks for coming down. Okay, uh, next, um, I know Ben's report is the next item on the agenda, but uh, with the weather situation and the fact that we just have um, eight people here, uh, I just wonder if maybe it would be more prudent to go to the board action items and knock those out. Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, so kind of flying by the seat of our pants here, we made a mid-course correction. We will go to, for board action, item number A, the citizen... Cemetery Advisory Committee appointment. And is there a staff uh, comment on this, or do you want me just to <coughs> tell who it is? We, we have an excellent candidate here, David Lamb. He's not only passionate, but he's also a historian, and that's kind of the theme of what we do in our cemetery operations. So we are fully supporting from the staff side of this, his uh, nomination to this committee. Is there a motion? So moved. Any further comments or discussion? Mm -hmm. Rebecca, would you call the roll, please? Galloway. Yes. Jensen. Jensen. Suzette. Suzette. Jensen. I can't hear from all those mufflers the other day. Suzette, are you there? Well, I guess we've lost her temporarily. Let's go on with the rest and maybe try her at the end. Fogel? Yes. Kenny Vanderhaar? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Cahill? Yes. George? Yes. Thornton? Yes. Feltner? Yes. Feltner? Yes. Chen? Yes. 
And Suzette, are you there? Yes. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> okay, that is unanimously approved. Next, we'll move on to item B for board action, the trail and greenways uh, committee appointment. You might recall at last month's meeting, we approved Carol George to be the park board liaison to the trails and greenways committee. Uh, it also turns out there was a second opening on the committee, and at the meeting, we, uh, uh, Vicky Facto volunteered for that. So this is to approve Vicky Facto unless there is uh, another nomination from the floor. So is there a motion? Any further questions, discussion? Okay, yeah. Rebecca, would you call the roll, please? Galloway? Yes. Jensen? Yes. Ogle? Yes. Kenny Vanderhaar? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Cahill? Yes. George? Yes. Thornton? Yes. Feltner? Yes. Chen? Yes. It is approved. Next, we'll move on to, for board action item C, the East Side Dog Park naming. And I'll turn that over to Ben for comments. Thank you. Well, when we have a naming come to us, we have a process in the city of naming policy. And tonight, uh, before we enter into that discussion on what the naming proposal is, we have to t decide how we give the public a notice to be uh, notified to be able to react to this. So first, we have establishing the method of public notice. And what we are proposing from staff tonight is you have a hearing at your next meeting, and you can actually, at that hearing, take action as well. Correct, Ian? So that's, we would like you to make a determination due to that so we can post and give everybody a public notice and then a certain amount of time is required. I think it's 10 days posting that's required to carry this out. And we'll do that on end if you so agree with our proposal. And then you also, as part of your motion, want to have the picking our next meeting as your date of hearing. So we're not actually approving the renaming of the park. We're simply setting a date for hearing. Absolutely. And we gave you a little background night in your packet so you could see where we were going with this, the naming and proposal naming of the dog park to Reno Dog Park Memorial. <laughs> Can't take action tonight according to policy and the way we have to govern these things. So is there a motion? So moved. Second. And what exactly is the motion? Can you help us with that, Ben? Yes. And you, we have to have a special motion here just setting the date of hearing as the, as the uh, <coughs> March, what's the date, Rebecca? 26th. 26th. So what we need is just well, establishing public first, notice. The first process here is to, would be whether or not they approve the staff recommendation for the method of notification of the yes. hearing. So that would be the first vote. And then second, we would have the to. The second vote would be setting the date of hearing. They can't do those two things together. They should be separate. Okay. Is everybody clear on that? Two motions, are, two motions are needed. One, establishing the public uh, method of public notice. First one. So let's see. Susan Nolan made the motion. Who seconded? Uh, Susan Koenig Vanderhaar. So is that okay? The first motion would be to establish the method per the staff's recommendation. That's okay. So any further comments or discussion about that? Okay, Rebecca, do you call the roll, please? Galloway? Yes. Jensen? Yes. Ogle? Yes. Kenny Vanderhaar? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Cahill? Yes. George? Yes. Thornton? Yes. Feltner? Yes. Chen? Yes. Okay, that motion is approved. Next, we'll have a second motion <laughs> to set the date of hearing, which will be our next park board meeting, March 26. Would someone make that motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion about that? Okay, Rebecca, you call the roll, please. Galloway. Yes. Jensen. Yes. Ogle. Yes. Kenny Vanderhaar. Yes. Nolan. Yes. Cahill. Yes. George. Yes. Thornton. Yes. Feltner. Yes. Chen. Yes. That is approved. Now are we done with the dog park issue? One last item. Um, again, in your purview, we would like to talk to you about the idea of having the approval at the next meeting just because of the opening and getting through the city council meetings that you have them approve. Um, if you're not comfortable uh, or information comes up that's uh, different than what we've been able to research and develop and bring to you, 
we're open to delaying it into April, but we'd like to keep things going for March just to give you a transparent idea of where stats are coming in our, our timing. I don't need a motion, I just want to make sure I had your feedback or you're um, getting some head shakes with you, so that's good. Have we decided how we're going to do it? I mean, where, when? Uh, how we're going to? When? Yes. Right. Uh, we, we have a name in the, in the communication for you, and we would have a, we'd have a nice ceremony if uh, the board approved it as well as the city council. We try to get that done in here in the springtime, or the summer. What's the full page in the register cost? If we could get the, the pet food people and people like that to sponsor and get somebody with some artistic talent to no design the page. We are, we, we've actually got uh, a couple individuals very interested in this right now. Some have given us money already for the development of the park. Mr. Conlon gave us $10,000, and he's interested in uh, naming this park too. So we're looking at a couple different ideas. We have to have something like we have at Grace Lake for people to have plaques for their loved ones along the bridge. We're looking for something for pets like that too. Our park planning division has designed something like that to keep a new revenue source come in to help manage these dog park facilities. Any more questions or comments about the dog park issue? Okay. Well, Joe? Yes. Um, I just wanted to let all of you know that I will be placing this on the agenda for the Northeast Neighbors meeting so that we have discussed it and we'll be there to support at the next meeting. Okay, great. Did you know the date of that meeting by chance? Okay, anything else from anybody? Okay, we're ready to move on. Uh, I'd suggest we move on to the cemetery fee item before we lose some people, uh, if that's okay. All right, so now we'll receive and file item D, cemetery fees. And let me kick this off with sort of a view from 30,000 feet. Uh, previously, in the last decade or, or more before, Cemeteries did not have a large subsidy from the city. In fact, in one year, I think 97 or 98, the amount of the city subsidy was only $5,000, so it was basically a break-even operation at that time. Now the city is subsidizing cemeteries to the tune of more than $800,000 a year. And with our current fiscal situation, that just is something that can't be continued. We have to do something to close that budget gap. Now, why did it get so high? Well, there are several reasons. One has been the trend towards cremations, culturally and socially. And, of course, that costs us uh, a loss of burial sites. Uh, and, of course, that trend is accentuated during the, the recession when people went to cremations even more to save money. Also, uh, the presence of the Iowa Veterans Cemetery in Van Meter, while it's very deserved by the veterans, and I'm glad they have that, our sales of plots for veterans has basically gone to zero because they're in Van Meter, they get a free lot. That has really hurt our sales. Another thing has been the acquisition, shall we say, by Des Moines of Elm Grove and Oak Grove, Grove cemeteries. Uh, we had to take over the maintenance of those two cemeteries and basically no revenue is coming in from those two cemeteries. Now you might say, well, why did we take them over? Well, it wasn't because we wanted to. It's state law. If a cemetery is within city limits and the private operators walk away from it or stop taking care of it, the city has to come in and take care of it. There's not an option. We couldn't say, oh, no, we don't want to. It's state law that said we had to take over that expense. So those are some of the reasons why the cemetery subsidy has gotten so large. And one of the things we've been looking at, which we'll talk about tonight, is raising some fees, updating our fee schedule, which has not been updated for quite some time. And also there is sort of a fallacy in, in our present fee schedule, which we've been using before, is that, for instance, at Glendale Cemetery, uh, we charge the same fee, regardless of where in the, the cemetery you'd be buried. So guess what? Everybody wants to be buried by the pond, which is a much more scenic place and they're not choosing to go out in the, the open areas that are further out in the cemeteries. So we've looked at creating a price differential to, re to reflect supply and demand there. And we've had some really great uh, work done by Marion Anderson and uh, Deanna uh, 
they've just done really a super job, and I'm going to turn that over to them for some comments. Before staff comes up, I want to thank you for that opening remarks, Joe, and tell you that this has been an overwhelming undertaking by staff as well as I'm very proud of our cemetery advisory committee. They've done some long hours working with our staff, and they're a great, they're a great sounding board on this before it gets back to you, and some of you are on that board. Uh, we wouldn't be here today if we didn't have a budget problem, obviously, and as we look going forward in the city, I don't see that uh, happening to change real soon. We need to look at only not only reductions in what we have for our expenses, but also revenue enhancement, and I'm hoping that today that we can get through um, a nice opening remarks with you, describe these things. I've asked Marlene just to come up here and just give you a little brief background about the process they went through, and then since we gave you an unbelievable amount of spreadsheets and data, it might be easier for us just to have you ask us questions as opposed to having Marlene go through every fee change. So that's kind of our stance today. Marlene? Oh, and then before Marlene starts, uh, I want to recognize some members of the cemetery committee who came here tonight. There's Max Nauer. Um, I'm Max, and anybody else? I think the weather is taking place. Right. <laughs> And of course, Suzette Jensen, who's uh, participating electronically, is also on the cemetery committee. So thanks for coming down, Max. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Galloway and members of the board, my name is Marlene Anderson. I'm Park and Recreation Supervisor. And I'd like to introduce Deanna Clausen, who's our cemetery operations manager. She took over that position last July and is doing a great job. And her efforts actually have resulted in a 14% increase in the sales in the last year. So all of the projections that you see are reflecting um, on that 14% increase that we're saying that we're going to sustain as well as increase. I would like to give um, Max Nauer, the chairperson of the Cem Citizen Cemetery Advisory Committee, a chance to speak for, uh, in support of this effort if you'd like to. Joe? Yes. Um, I'd like to say that I, you know, I think the staff has done a, a marvelous effort on looking at, at marketing and looking at some of the things, the detail that, that we have, have kind of brushed aside for many years in dealing with the cemeteries. We know that things are changing. We're in a changing market. And, and I think the new uh, recommendations coming from staff that have been thoroughly reviewed and gone over by the cemetery committee are, are very needed and are very good, and uh, I'm, I'm very proud of the, the uh, product that is being presented to the board. Yeah, great comment, Suzette. Uh, and I, I, too, want to commend the staff. They're, they are really doing a great job. So thank you for, thank you for pointing that out. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the uh, uh, Parks Board and Mr. Director, uh, I do appreciate the opportunity just for a couple of moments uh, to uh, speak to uh, what we have been doing. Uh, and I want to commend Marlene Anderson uh, and, and those who are responsible for her appointment. Uh, she's brought a new business sense uh, to, to uh, our committee and our mission. And she also was wise enough to see great value in uh, giving Deanna Clausen uh, new responsibilities. Somebody who has a great deal of experience and deep knowledge, uh, which many of us are lacking uh, as many years as we may have served on the committee. So uh, those who uh, selected Marlene and Marlene herself, uh, coupled with uh, the <coughs> changes in responsibility and uh, uh, that have been given to Deanna are responsible, I think, for some very good changes here. Now, that doesn't mean that our parks, or excuse me, our cemetery advisory committee is not responsible for a good deal themselves as well. When Marlene came on, she asked more of us, and we wanted to give more uh, under her direction and Deanna's direction. I just want to mention uh, some of those members, or if I may, all of the members of the committee by name. And this is alpha order. And some of you will recognize that uh, certain members came from this parks board. And after leaving the parks board, remained on our committee. And this is only active members. And they do give a great deal, and they give more when they're asked to. 
Uh, that includes Dennis Allen, Pat Beeman, Joe Galloway, Tammy Hayes, Suzette, who is uh, with us by phone, myself, Max Hour, Chris Nagla, Carlton Peterson, a longtime and valued member of the board who also serves as a member of the business community that serves of the same needs that uh, we do as a cemetery advisory committee. Sue Vavone, Farrell Wagner, and Farrell is a longtime member of this board uh, who gives as much and more perhaps than she should be giving at this point in time, but she gives willingly. And we're really thrilled to have our new member, David Lamb, for all that he will offer. And uh, so I just want to thank you uh, for allowing, I think, uh, our staff to uh, uh, have the freedom to do as they have done. And I think that uh, Joe Galloway here, Chairman Galloway, was very appropriate in his praise as well. This is a new day, and I think that uh, this staff uh, should be a model for uh, what they're doing uh, that uh, other staffs and other departments might consider following. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Great comments. Thank you very much, Max, for your compliments and your support. Um, I just want to explain to you that um, Deanna Clausen and I uh, were a team in uh, creating this proposal. We worked days and weeks on this proposal as a team, and therefore I think it's only appropriate that we're here as a team tonight. So with that, um, I will um, join or uh, continue on from where Joe was making comments that uh, you've already received extensive information and analysis of the recommended cemetery changes uh, in your board packets. But for the benefit of those people who are um, perhaps watching on the television screen, I'll give a brief overview of what has led to this recommendation. First of all, uh, Joe referred to the fact that uh, the cemeteries for uh, 15 years have vacillated in the amount of um, subsidy that the taxpayer subsidy that they have done. You can see uh, in the graph that's on the screen here uh, that this is, has gone up and down and steadily uh, climbed uh, to a point of 2011 where it reached a subsidy uh, level of 49 percent. So the reason I want to point out that percentage is I'm going to refer to a percentage in telling you about this um, briefly tonight. And that is that um, you see a rather precipitous uh, decrease in the amount of subsidy that is reflected in the red line here. And Deanna, would you want to point that out? Um, and actually, it's, it's even more than that. It's actually a direct vertical drop. I couldn't portray that on this line graph because I had to have another column, so to speak. But really, what we're suggesting here is that if you would approve this recommended um, fee structure, we would be able to drop within one year's time. We are projecting from uh, what is now a 39% uh, uh, subsidy down to a 7% subsidy. And the following year, uh, and that's a very conservative projection, I want to say, uh, the following year we would potentially be down um, past her at zero and potentially going um, the other way on our revenue projection. So this could actually become uh, a source of revenue for the city rather than a, a source of subsidy. So I do want to um, point out to you that uh, in the fiscal year, and this is reflected here in this chart, and uh, Deanna will, um, just a second, um, in fiscal year FY14, uh, the city had projected that we would have decreased the amount of subsidy to 33 percent. So uh, we're on our way to that level with the expenditures, um, but uh, there's only so far that you can go with um, reducing the expenditures without impacting customer service and the appearances of the cemetery and also the stress on staff. So really the way to uh, rectify the whole situation is through increased revenue. We've already undertaken several uh, different um, and I want to show you that um, with another chart here, we have the, uh, another graphic, the exact amounts that we're talking about here. I shouldn't say exact because they are projected, but right now the expenditures um, projected for the budget were $1,400,000. 
And already, um, right now, with where we are in this fiscal year so far, we are 4% less than that revenue that is projected for 2014 fiscal year. So we're on the way to all, not only meeting those <laughs> reductions, but also exceeding those um, redu reduced um, expenses. Also, you'll see that through these um, revenue um, projections, we would um, bring about an increase in revenue of, of $375,000, basically, which would take us to a point of revenue of $1,300,000, which exceeds anything that's ever been um, achieved pr uh, previously. And this year, it would take us down to about a $100,000 subsidy. So how would we um, come bring this about? Not only uh, would we, we already have undertaken um, uh, marketing changes such as signage and changing uh, the, the, just the name, the Des Moines Municipal Cemeteries is a vote of strength, so to speak, when people hear that on the phone because it says that the city of Des Moines is behind these seven cemeteries. So um, we have, in coming up with these price projections, we have assessed sales history. We have looked at the strengths that we have in the marketplace. That includes um, the city cemeteries are one of the few areas where people can choose an option of having above ground monuments. Most of the other cemeteries in the area have gone to flush monuments because they're easier to maintain because the mowers can just go over them. They don't have to trim around all of the monuments and things. So we pretty much control the market in that um, area with the above ground monuments. And so that is reflected in the pricing that we um, are able to charge and now in the increases that we are suggesting. Uh, we also looked at staff expense in carrying out some of our processes and opening and closing of, of grave sites and things of that nature. Also, the marketability. Um, where do we um, stand above uh, those in uh, the marketplace? Uh, the marketability of, as Joe indicated, uh, the areas by the pond or the areas um, in the new um, columbarium areas and the, the um, newly planted tree areas and roadways and things of that nature. Um, also, we looked at inflationary increases, as Joe inferred earlier. Um, we have not had a price increase since 2008. Inflation has taken place since that period of time, and in 2008, it was only a minimal increase uh, that was made at that point. So pretty much uh, not since 2006 has there been a substantial price increase. Uh, also, uh, the prices of our area competitors. We have uh, gathered that information and assessed that information. Um, at the time that we have been working on this, there are five cemeteries who are also in the process of increasing their prices. And uh, it's pretty much our thought that even as we move forward, the others will move forward along with us because we really are uh, a major competition in this marketplace. Also, uh, we strategized on how to push sales to various areas of the cemetery, of the cemeteries. Um, in other words, we want to push the sales to those new columbarium that we have built uh, so that we can um, get our payback on that um, capital improvement expense. Uh, there are areas of the cemetery where we want to push to the new areas, which are further north from the uh, entrance, so that we're able to populate, so to speak, those areas too. And so you'll see that in some cases we have kept prices the same, while at the same time we're increasing those prices in other areas where we, again, are able to um, get the sales because of their location in proximity to the pond, the entrance, and things of that nature. Also, we have differential pricing that we're recommending. Trees and roadways, uh, people, those are desirable amenities among the, the public. And so um, we are charging more for um, our lots that are in those areas. Also, um, as you see on some of the, um, Deanna will put up a graphic that, we, that you have, but it shows um, our new columbarium. Uh, we have looked at all of the different views in the top of that photo you'll see or that rendering, you'll see that there's a lake. And on the opposite side that you can't see mm -hmm. is the abbey and the roadway. So we have come up with differential pricing um, on a graphic. On a graphic that was in your package, there it is that shows we actually have nine different prices um, for 
this new columbarium. And uh, the locations are determining what those different prices are. So you'll see that the, um, the lower in the gold and green colors, yellow and green colors, those are the sides that are by the pond. You'll see on that uh, legend that those are the more expensive um, niches. This is a new columbarium with 568 niches, each of which holds two sets of cremains. So it has the potential of um, oh, almost 1,200 1, um, burials in that um, structure. So uh, the top one is the, the one that the area that's closest to the abbey. Um, that's a desirable location. So you'll see that those are also in the upper range. The two middle um, columns, um, although they're very desirable, uh, they have, you'll see that the middle rows are um, a lower price than the top rows are and the bottom rows. So we've assessed the marketability of each of those different areas and then attributed a different price to all of them. So um, customers all are also able to select whether they want to be as a burial site, uh, but in comparison to the Veterans Cemetery, for example, where they're not able to select a location, they are instead put in, a, they're uh, buried in chronological sequence. And so that's what's referred to in your price sheets as non-select. So um, that's where um, it's, it's in chronological order, so to speak. The staff is determining where that next burial is going to take place. So you're paying more for the ability to select where the burial site is going to be for your loved ones or for yourself. So um, I want to uh, point out, as Max has, that the uh, Cem Citizen Cemetery Advisory Committee uh, has unanimously approved this uh, recommendation to you. Also, I have conferred with the finance department and the accounting uh, department, finance department and legal department, and they both uh, concur with the approach that we have taken and the legality of what we're uh, presenting, so to speak. Uh, the executive committee of your group also reviewed this a couple of weeks ago, and they made a recommendation for a slight change, and we have uh, embraced that recommendation, and it's reflected in our uh, price sheet. So with that, I'll entertain any questions that you might have in regard to this. Susan? I noticed on the um, cremains, it went from 425 to 775, which is, I think, a huge increase. Is that because of the cost of building the new columbarium? There, or switch, what is, yes, that would be great. Um, the reason why that's such a big increase because other cemeteries have already been charging between 700 to 900 to bury cremains, and we have only been charging 425. So we just came up to what the market price is. Wow. And you're speaking to in ground cremains burials, yes, right? But I, that just seemed just for it families is. from from you know looking maybe last year at 425 and then. This year, looking at 775 is a huge. Well, I guess what I would point out is that you're not looking last year. You're looking at 2006 and 2008. But still, and so we have an increase. This was still would have been what the price was. Right, yeah. right. And then I, I don't understand. Um, it's a second engraving. It's a $50 charge. Is that only for niches? That's right. Right, right. So we only, people for their monuments, when they pay for a monument, they also pay for the engraving on that monument and they pay their um, vendor that amount. However, for the niches, for example, right now at Laurel Hill Cemetery, we do not have plaques on those niches. We have, it's the, the names are engraved on those niches and they will be also engraved on this new um, columbarium, the Lakeview columbarium also. So we have a charge for the dates to be added to a, um, an existing engraving. And so what you're, going, what you're seeing on here is that rather than having a flat cost on things other than the second, um, the, the date, um, we are charging a markup instead so that we can float with the cost that we have. Right now, those costs were set in 2008 and we have incurred increases in, in the cost of the plaques and the cost of the engraving and the cost of the bud vases and everything. And so instead, we're doing what anybody else would do in a retail market, and that is charge a percentage of markup. I saw that. Mm -hmm. I just, I assumed that, and I shouldn't assume, that people would do that all at one time and not have to come back for a fee. No, well, they can't thing. because um, when, if people pre-need okay. choose a location, 
and then they choose to have, most people would, choose to have the engraving of their names at the time that they make, um, the they make the purchase, then, of course, they don't know when they're going to pass. Okay. No. So then they have to but come I, back. And families would, you know, buy the niche and then do the plaque and that all at the same time as opposed to buying and putting your name on it and then putting a date on it. So it's, it's a two-step a two step. Uh, right, it's the same with in, with it's the same as for a monument on and a grave on a ground a, a grave in the ground, where um, when you purchase a lot, it's very commonplace for you to put then a monument on that place right then, with the names of the of a couple, and then they put their birth date, and then they would later um, after a person is deceased, then they would come back in and put the date in place. That's many many times when people um, prearrange, they'll come in and they will um, buy their um, monument ahead of time, and they'll come out there and they'll have everything engraved. But a lot of times, one of their spouses or partners would pass, so at that time they'll have both their names engraved with the date of their spouse's birthday and their passing date, and then their date of their birth date, and then when they pass, and their children, or whoever would have to have their passing date engraved. Very common. That make more sense to you? Oh, I understand it. it yeah, <laughs> but it's also very common for people to go ahead and make the purchase at the time if they're doing their pre-planning. But so you to don't speak. have to do plaques or monuments at the time of purchase. That's right. <clears throat> nope. So okay, and I think that needs to be understood that just because you're doing that, you don't have another fee just when you purchase it on top of the fee that you already have for purchasing. You do have a fee for the engraving of the niche. Separately. At time of purchase? Whenever you decide to have the engraving done, you have. But it so it's not included at the that's time right. of purchase. Right. That's right. So there are four different expenses. First, you purchase the niche or the um, grave, that's right. And then um, you choose to either at that point or, or after death have a um, plaque or a monument put in place. In the case of a monument, they're purchasing that from a monument business. And then at the time of death, there's an opening and closing fee, which, is ref which you also have in your packet. And then there is the cost to come back and re-engrave, whether they're paying a monument company to come and engrave the year of death or they're paying us, who and, and they're not paying us, we're paying a vendor. So what they're doing is reimbursing us for that expense. I just, I still feel though that the Kermaine's cost increase is really high. And you know, this is, and I just want to give my opinion because you gave me this. And, I understand. And so that's, I still right. feel it's, it's too high too fast, but. However, it is reflective of what's being charged in the marketplace. So what it really is doing is catching us up. Any other comments? Oh, our questions. I would like to just say, as we did at the executive committee meeting, what a job the staff has done on this. I know just from all the information we've given them, huge under Thank you. Okay, thank you, Marlene. Thank you, Dana. Great presentation. Thank you, Max, for your comments. This is a receive and file item. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, now, Ben, correct me where I go wrong here, but I assume this will come back for final board action next month. Is that right? Correct. They come back next month and then we'll be on to the city council pending your decisions to pass this and we'll move to the city council process. Any further discussion, comments, questions from anybody? Anybody on the phone have any comments or questions? Suzette or no. Cindy? No. No. Okay. Are we ready to vote to receive and file then? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is received and filed. Okay, we made it through the uh, voting items. Now we'll move to Ben's report.
This is the home stretch, and it won't be this long, I promise, get you out of here because of the snow event. Uh, again, we sent you an email on the Iowa Park and Recreation Association Spring Conference. We are the local host this year, which means the people out in that audience on our team are working really hard putting together a great conference. Hopefully you've had a chance to peruse the, the uh, brochure of sessions. And again, we'd like you just to RSVP to Rebecca as soon as you can, because board members are free to attend this as a local host committee. We get that uh, benefit. We have one of the larger boards, but we also have one of the larger staff pieces putting all this work into this this year. So I'm very proud of what our team's pulled together here. And you'll see a great conference and get back to Rebecca if you can before, um, when was our deadline, Rebecca? End of this month, I believe. End of this month, that would be great. And the conference is um, the 7th of April to Sunday. It's kind of a fun day when people show up to town and they there's golf, there's disc golf, there's trail riding, kind of experience Des Moines Parks and Recreation for other professionals and board members throughout the state. Then that Monday, the 8th, that's when the sessions start, and they go through Monday, Tuesday, and then half a day Wednesday. Rebecca, could you resend that email with the reminder on the deadline? Of course, appreciate that. Absolutely. That's all I have for the IPRA update, if you have any questions of us. All right, Brian, come on up. Brian's going to give you an update on the mayor's annual ride. Just It's coming up here before you're... Too long. I want to make sure you have that on your calendar. Chairman Galloway, members of the Park and Recreation Board. I'm Brian Becker, Park and Recreation Superintendent. I would like to take a few minutes to talk about the Mayor's Annual Bike Ride. It's one of my favorite events of the year. Um, this year, the the ride is April 20th at 10 a.m. and we'll start at the, at the City Hall. The Mayor's Annual Bike Ride, or MAR, is a 25-mile bike route ride through uh, the streets and trails of Des Moines. This event draws 800 to 1,000 participants um, annually every year of all ages um, and is the kickoff to the biking season in Des Moines. Proceeds of this event go to improvements of our bike trails. And I'm proud to say in the last 10 years, we've raised over $100,000. Registration begin is on March 1st. And for more information, to register or for volunteer opportunities, you can go to dmparks.org or you can call the office at 237-1386. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. For the audience, how much will that be to register? Uh, it's $20. $20 per yeah. Again, those proceeds go into furthering the trail system in Des Moines, so it's a great program to follow. <coughs> it's, uh, if those of those uh, Des Moines residents out there are getting ready to prepare for rag Bryce, it's a great warm up, so get involved and participate. Okay, thanks, Brian. Uh, John's coming up to talk about the Imagination Preschool. It's something that you're familiar with, and we have a nice piece we want to show you. Uh, one of the things you asked us at the last meeting was to uh, get some more press on this and some more publicity. So we want to show you a nice video that was um, taken by Channel 13, and this will give you a better idea of what we're seeing. It's uh, something we're very proud of and something that's new to the, our field. Chairman Galloway, members of the Park and Recreation Board, John Hagener, Park and Recreation Superintendent. Before we show you that video clip, I just want to say a huge thank you to our marketing supervisor, Jen Fletcher. Jen is the one who really helps tell our story. I think it's one of her many responsibilities is just as marketing supervisor to do just that and tell our story. She's the one that secured uh, WHA Channel 13 to do this uh, two and a half minute clip. So, well, before I show this clip as well, I'm gonna, there's Imagination Play School, that's the name of the program. A component of Imagination Play School is Imagination Playground. And that's the, this is the full material. I'm going to hand this around. Uh, they're going to talk about it in the clip, and I'll, I'll finish up when, we're, when the clip's done. <laughs> Every pipe dream. 
you love it. But parents may love this indoor playground even more than the kids. I work part time, and so it's something that we can do to get out of the house, especially since it's cold, and get them to learn to run. Des Moines Parks and Recreation hosts the Imagination Play School every Wednesday and Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. through the end of March. <laughs> It's an open gym with a toy house, toy kitchen, toy cars, and more inside the Pioneer Columbus Community Center on Southeast 5th Street. A lot of the toys over there we have at home outside, but we don't get to play with them until summer because it's cold. The program is for those five and younger. It costs $1.50 per kid. The program used to be called Preschool Park. They say you're strong enough to lift this barbell. But now there's a new addition that works kids' bodies and brains. Yeah, it looks like fun. I don't know what, what you do, but we'll learn. The new attraction this year is this Imagination Playground. It's a bunch of building blocks you can move around, create new things with. The Boy Parks and Recreation Department says it hopes to use it throughout the year. And it really is what we're calling um, it's life-size tinker toys and blocks, and it lets kids just do free play, and they can build <laughs> whatever they want, however they want, and they'll run into their imagination. <laughs> Jen Fletcher says the Imagination Playground costs $5,800. She says Des Moines Parks and Recreation is the only department to have it in the area, and they plan to get plenty of use out of it. We can have it in the community centers, we can take it outside of our parks, and um, it's, it's safe, it's versatile, and it's pretty long-lasting. So. And like that all this playing around guarantees a long afternoon nap. In Des Moines, Megan Ruther, Channel 13 News. Imagination Play School runs through March 29th on Wednesdays and Fridays. By the way, an adult must stay with the kids at all times. So again, thanks, thanks for uh, Jen for securing that. Uh, that's it was just a great piece. Uh, since that aired, we've actually uh, our, our we actually had to expand our program. As it mentioned, we started from uh, not excuse me, from 10 to 1. Uh, we were ad averaging about 50 or so kids, which in, uh, in turn makes about 70 or so people, including adults, in the gym. So we expand our hours from 9, nine to 2. Um, $1.50 at the, right now it's at the uh, Pioneer Columbus Community Center. So question, <coughs> questions, comments? One more item just to remember for us is uh, staff. We have a great creative staff, and they're going to take this event out to the parks this summer. So we're going to hit parks on a weekly basis if we can, and also including Gateway Park, sculpt the Sculpture Gardens, and show this off. So. I think it's just great. As an early childhood person, I'm just thrilled to see those critical thinking, problem-solving skills working with these tiny little ones. That's just, it's, that's great. Any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you, John. Thank you, Jen. Great job. Great, right, Brian. Just wanted to make sure everybody, if you haven't heard, there's this big bike event coming to Des Moines in July. Uh, late July, it's actually the same day as your park board meeting. So we'll have to think ahead about maybe having a different park board meeting. I'd probably rather be here after what I'm going to be doing on that day. But uh, we will be involved heavily in Ride By in some fashion as the Parks Department as well as the city in general. Uh, I, as well as Matt Salvatore, are on the local organizing committee. So we've had a meeting as of today. We're doing all the good things from planning um, routes into town, out of town, logistics, camping, entertainment, all those great things. Uh, we're looking to make this one for the history books. So, you know, once one of those things that uh, people will never forget. The last time it came to Des Moines was in the late 90s, and there's been so much improvements downtown. That's where we're focusing everybody is to the downtown to show them all the great improvements that we're all proud of, we all know about. So we'll expect huge numbers. Right now, um, we're talking to the Ragbri officials, and they're thinking, you know, they average anywhere from 10 to 20,000 people per year on their route, on their ride, uh, just depending on the weather and, and uh, what else is going on in the, the summers. But with the big city of Des Moines and all the biking and the trail lovers we have here, we expect that to double, if not to get to the 50,000 mark. Right now is what we're hearing, talking to the right by. So we'll have a, a huge amount of people coming to town. The day before is the shortest ride uh, of the week. So people will be in town early Tuesday, and they'll be here a long time, which is great. So we're looking for that great economic impact, as well as the chance to show the city off. Lastly, any questions on right by? We have uh, your Did You Know, Mike Gall has a Did You Know on one of our parks. Chairman Galloway, members of the board, Mike Gall, horticulture inspector, and I'm here to present your Did You Know uh, for this month, and we're going to highlight Red Park, Redhead Park and some of the history that goes along with that park. 
First, the park is located at East 18th and Dean. It's uh, in an area of the city where there's heavy industrial to the south and uh, residential to the north. Its historic name is East Park. It was acquired to the city in 1886. Uh, it sits on about 1.1 acres over on the east side. It has an open air shelter, a uh, playground that was built in 1995, uh, half of a basketball hoop and some open space and some mature trees that outline the park. And also this does uh, lie within the Capital Lease Neighborhood Association area. A little bit of the history on the park. Uh, on the southeast section of the park, there's a boulder and a plaque that was placed in 1925 that designates the area as the site of Camp Burnside, which is an area where Union troops formed and uh, coordinated from central Iowa to join the Lincoln administration in the Civil War. Now Redhead, uh, the person of, of which the park is named after, Wesley Redhead, uh, moved from England to Canada when he was four years old with his parents. Within two years, they both had died. Uh, after that, he spent some time in the eastern states with different relatives. Finally made himself, uh, found himself on the Mississippi Re River working on a steamboat and barge traffic. Uh, he deserted that position and went to Iowa City before coming to Des Moines in 1851. After he made it to Des Moines, he found his fortune in coal mining, real estate, and selling books. And he was noted to be the first postmaster in Des Moines and also the vice president of the Equitable Life Insurance Company when that was formed. He was also a prominent landowner. He owned about 550 acres on the east side of Des Moines, ranging from about where Redhead Park is to the south to, Des Moines, to the Des Moines River. And he's also noted to be one of the individuals that uh, picked out the fairground site where it is today and also sold the property to the state according to the history books. Uh, and then he gifted his front yard as a park in 1886, where his mansion sat is where the business is in the left photograph here, it, which is south of Redhead Park. Uh, the mansion is believed to be designed by the same architect that uh, designed Terrace Hill. And inside the mansion, there was nine fireplaces, seven stairwells, uh, five porches, and 20 rooms where Mr. Redhead was known to entertain up to 300 guests at one time. One of those guests included Mr. B.T. Barnum from the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Uh, when the circus was in Des Moines, he would rent staging area to the circus for, to, to conduct the service, or circus. When the Barnum and Bailey Circus did their farewell tour in the mid-1880s, Mr. Barnum gave this paper mache mechanical elephant to the Redhead family. Uh, it does, it's uh, shown to be uh, Jumbo the elephant from the circus, which at the time was known to be the biggest elephant in the world. And the reason this comes up, it does have some recent significance. This elephant appeared on an online auction in 2007 and sold for $6,000. So kind of a little link uh, from the past to the recent present. Uh, Redhead Park is a relatively small park within the city of Des Moines, but as, as you quickly heard from this quick snapshot, it holds quite a bit of significance um, in our park system here in Des Moines. Thank you. Questions or comments for Mike? No, I really like these things. I do. Yeah. Wait, I said that, yeah. And it's actually pretty fun to put together, too. You yeah. find some odd things, so it's pretty neat. Might just set the bar high for the rest of our team. Um, <laughs> what, what we've done is we've, we've assigned a park to everybody. They don't know it yet, but uh, I'm working at my office. That we're all going to take one and yeah. give you a presentation to keep these coming. Yeah, our history is really important, yeah. and it's interesting to all of us to learn why these parks are named after where they are. And is there any way that we could put it together so that you would have a something on it rather than just a one-time thing? Yeah, we're trying to collect the history for a lot of reasons. There's one's for our history signage program in the parks, mm -hmm. but as well as update the website and eventually do something like that where we coordinate this and have one area of collection of data. Well, I think, you know, like the art app, the public art app, if mm -hmm. we could do that and have that come up with the history of the park or what it was named for on, yeah. on the website. That'd be fairly easy for you to do if you just take your, um, your presentation and you could just add the same voiceover and throw it out there for none social media or something. I just think that would be yeah, really like, great. People would like that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Y
Yes, yes, it's a great sight. Some of our parks have more uh, easily achievable in finding uh, the actual history. Some of them will take us a little more time, so we're trying to get these a site out well enough in advance that we can do this. That's cool. <coughs> Thanks, Mike. Great report. Enjoyed it. Okay, Ben, anything else? Just uh, on your desk today, just to save a date. We don't know the exact timing of the events, but we're going to dedicate the nice woodland arch that Gerald LeBlanc donated with that uh, woodland cemetery. So if you wouldn't mind blocking your date, we'll have a few more of these coming to you in the near future. We'll, we'll pack your summer full of some dedications and new openings. So it's great news. Any questions for Ben about anything in his report or about anything at all of any nature? Any announcements or other comments from anybody on the board? Well, I want to thank everybody for coming out when it was tough to uh, come out. And I want to thank the people who are on the phone, Cindy and Suzette, for helping us have a quorum. So everybody uh, gets a gold star who came or participated. Is there a motion to adjourn? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody.